For analyzing uh, phase noise near center frequency, we need to remember that uh, transistors um, in the circuit, in the active circuit, uh, in the active part of the VCO, uh, generates one of ref noise that is proportional to the DC current that flows through them. And so this one of ref noise is present in the, in, in the circuit. Um, but this one of ref noise is introduced into a nonlinear circuit. Uh, this is a very uh, large signal circuit with oscillations, sometimes can go almost rail to rail, and there's some uh, mixing uh, of uh, noises also happening in, in the VCO. So the one of ref flicker noise of the transistors actually mixes with the 1 over f squared thermal noise that was introduced by the tank and uh, uh, also some, some portion of the thermal noise of the transistors themselves. And this uh, mixing um, actually has a product that is uh, described by 1 over f uh, to the third uh, that was described in the Leeson uh, model uh, we introduced uh, previously. Since the VCO is very nonlinear, uh, large signal circuit, uh, it is very difficult to analytically analyze um, the 1 over f to the third uh, behavior um, quantitatively. But qualitatively, um, we can describe the two parts and assume that the uh, transistors are now uh, contribute one over F noise, that it depends on the bias current, and the tank contributes thermal noise that we uh, showed um, before, contributes one over F squared uh, noise, phase noise performance, and these two halves actually interact in a nonlinear fashion, uh, generating, the, generating the product that is uh, one over F to the third. Now, uh, graphically, what we will find as the total noise uh, in the output of the VCO will be the sum of, uh, of uh, all noises. So, uh, here we can see the, the product of uh, the noises contributed by the two halves. And the product uh, starts by, by a 1 over F squared uh, for the regions that are um, wide, uh, wide band or where we see only uh, thermal noise contributed by the transistors. Uh, but in uh, frequencies closer to this carrier, the product of these two will actually contribute 1 over F third uh, noise behavior. However, this noise is added to the noise contributed by um, the tank that is in some frequencies higher so the total contribution of noise will be the addition of these two noises and it, it, it is described by the blue, um, the blue line that is actually summing these two uh, noises. And what we find in this graph is that uh, um, the frequency where uh, 1 over f to the third start to take shape uh, is lower than uh, the frequency of the 1 over f, that noise that was um, generated by the transistors. So, uh, we just know that it's lower and um, if we want to reduce it, a, a good way to, uh, to do it is to reduce the 1 over f um, corner frequency because we know the 1 over f third will always be lower. So that's uh, uh, qualitative way to understand uh, how we can reduce this uh, corner frequency. Now it is time to talk about VCO biasing and the related performance. So the VCO performance, um, as we can see by the headline of this uh, uh, slide, is uh, related to, to biasing. And uh, we divide it into two regimes of operation. One is uh, 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 an operation in the current limited mode 
uh, which we are going to describe soon, and then voltage limited uh, mode. So in the current limited mode, um, we find that by doubling the current, the measurement of phase noise is improved by 6 dB. And uh, this is explained by um, the understanding that the measurement of the phase noise is a rel relative measurement. Okay, So if we double the current, uh, we uh, contribute uh, from the tank the same noise because it's a passive contribution. Yes, the transistors will contribute more noise, uh, more, more one of ref noise, but usually uh, we designed a VCO such that uh, uh, these frequencies will not be as critical. Um, so thermal noise is not really changing much and we find that the output voltage of the uh, VCO is directly related uh, or relative to the bias uh, current. And so what happens when we double the current, we actually double the output voltage and when we normalize it to the same uh, noise contribution, we find that we, uh, we have actually introduced the ratio, uh, uh, we improve the ratio by, by 2 or 6 dB uh, in a log scale. So this is a current limited uh, mode. Of course, it cannot happen to, uh, to infinity, uh, but we find that at low currents, when we increase bias current, uh, the voltage out uh, is, is uh, doubled, um, and the, the phase noise measurement is, is improved by 6 dB for each multiplication of the current and uh, we can use it up to a certain degree. At some point we will find that the output voltage of the VCO is not growing anymore, it's not behaving according to this linear uh, relationship and we don't want to cross this point as will be shown later on. But if we want to increase performance in this current limited um, regime we can do it by doubling the current. Now, when we get to the voltage limited uh, uh, mode, uh, as we just mentioned, the voltage is not really growing linearly anymore. However, in this regime, uh, we will show later on that transistors are pouring a lot of noise into the tank. Uh, longer periods of the, uh, of the total um, oscillation period Plus, the output voltage is not uh, growing by much and we don't uh, really uh, um, improve phase noise measurement anymore as we, uh, we are going to see uh, in, in some graphs, few, uh, few graphs in, in the next few, uh, few slides. Since the VCO is uh, nonlinear, we used to we need to use uh, some help from uh, simulators uh, to prove um, some of the uh, um, behavior, uh, the VCO behavior we uh, we described before. So this example, example one, describes a VCO in the current uh, limited mode. So uh, basically, the following schematic was. Uh, simulated in a simulator okay and uh, oscillation started when this current was around 1.6 milliamp for these uh, values of the tank and uh, the performance described here is actually um, representing a 2 milliamp bias uh, of this uh, VCO so here we can see the transient in time domain and here we can uh, have a zoom on the uh, output voltage and, uh, and uh, after stabilization of this uh, uh, oscillation. So we definitely have oscillations um, that are uh, at the output of the VCO or the, this oscillator. Um, and we will analyze it and, and compare it to, uh, to other currents in the next few slides. 
So we continue with this uh, example one that is current limited uh, VCO um, example and we look at uh, VGS and IDS of the transistors. So for each transistor if we have a total of 2 milliamp we see that the average is uh, 1 milliamp average of uh, the drain source uh, current and um, the VGS uh, that is uh, actually a replica of the uh, the output current is uh, quite nicely sinusoidal and uh, this is actually the way we inject current uh, into the tank as was described before so uh, the oscillation frequency was chosen to be 3.5 gigahertz uh, in this example and here we have a measurement uh, of the phase noise uh, from the simulator. So uh, this is frequency axis, this is the amplitude of the noise, of course relative to uh, the, the power or the voltage of the carrier. Um, and we can see that between these two markers uh, there's a, a almost 20 dB uh, of difference in the noise level and they describe one decade, so it's 10 kilohertz here, 100 kilohertz offset from the uh, center frequency here. So we get the theoretical 20 dB uh, per decade uh, performance. And this is definitely one over F squared uh, behavior uh, that we see here. However, the, the absolute uh, values that we get here uh, the minus 74 that we see at 10 kilohertz or the minus 90 uh, for that we see in uh, 100 kilohertz may not be good enough for some applications. Some systems will need better um, phase noise performance. So we already know that we can increase the current and this is what we are going to do in the next slides just to make sure that it works. In example two, we have the exact same VCO schematic. The only difference is that we have doubled the BIOS current. And we are looking at the performance of the VCO. So of course, with a double current, it will oscillate. Uh, this is not a problem at all. Uh, but uh, looking um, into the performance, the transient performance of the VCO, we see that it takes the VCO less time to really uh, start the oscillations. So here we see the transient, uh, the, so if we, uh, we look at this uh, period between zero and the start of oscillations, it's shorter now because we have more energy returned to the tank, so oscillations can build up faster. And if we look at the amplitude of the oscillations in a steady state, uh, we will find that by doubling the current, we have doubled the output voltage. And now, uh, What's left for us is really to check that the phase noise uh, simulation uh, has also improved as predicted by 6, by 6 dB. So this will be done in the next slide. Let's examine the drain source current and uh, gate source voltage for the 4 milliamp um, example. Uh, we see that the average of the current is a 2 milliamp for transistor per transistor, as expected. Um, if we look at the resonance frequency, it is slightly lower than it used to be before because the higher uh, current changes uh, slightly the dynamics of the transistors and affecting the uh, transistor capacitance that is contributing to the total capacitance of the uh, um, resonator or the tank. And by looking at the phase noise, uh, we can uh, see the effect of uh, the phase noise uh, uh, when we double the current by two, by a factor of two. And we find that we actually get the 6 dB improvement that was uh, forecasted, which is great. Uh, it's, it's a major uh, improvement. Um, if we look farther into lower frequencies that sometimes are not that in interesting, we will uh, notice that the slope may have changed. So the 1 over 3rd uh, regi uh, uh, region 
uh, is uh, maybe now more significant because the transistors are open a um, larger portion of the period, uh, injecting more noise, more one over F noise in this uh, period. However, if we only care about frequencies higher than, than 10 kilohertz, we just improve performance. And this was not achieved by reducing noise, but rather by multiplying the output voltage by a factor of two. We have seen that by doubling the current at the current uh, limited mode, um, we can improve the phase noise uh, performance of the VCO. And we can try to continue do it, and this is what we will do in the, uh, this slide, um, to show that at some, at some point the current will be high enough for uh, uh, the VCO reach the voltage limited uh, mode of operation. So what we see is that if we multiply again the current by a factor of two, so now it's eight milliamps, the output voltage is almost doubling, still almost doubling. If we look at the current, the IDS, so it start, it's starting clipping, it becomes a bigger portion of the period, so we inject more noise, so uh, the slope uh, in the 1 over uh, F to the third is uh, slightly higher here. Uh, yeah, we, we don't uh, have a big change in the resonance frequency. Uh, and still the phase was improved by 5 dB this time. Okay? What happens if we multiply again? So now we have 16 milliamp. Okay? Uh, yeah, the voltage is not really doubled. It's growing, but not really doubled. It's starting to saturate. The current um, has two peaks now. It's wide. It's, uh, it's not even clipped, but it's, uh, it has this... Uh, a very uh, unique shape that has two peaks and we will find later on that this these peaks don't coincide uh, anymore with the output voltage which was very important for us before and not very surprisingly we see that uh, the phase noise for for this case even though we have doubled the current the phase noise uh, did not uh, really improve but rather started uh, degrading so we definitely cannot continue increasing the current to infinity. There will be some um, limit to that, as we understand and as we uh, described before, when we reach this uh, voltage-limited uh, uh, performance of the VCO. So we can summarize uh, um, the biasing of the VCO by comparing the current-limited um, mode versus the voltage-limited uh, mode of operation. If we go back to the current uh, limited mode, in this example, 4 milliamp uh, bias current, we see that the, uh, the phase of the uh, current injected into the tank actually uh, coincide with the output voltage, which is what we wanted to achieve before. However, when we get to the 16 milliamp example, and we look at the transient of the current, uh, there are two peaks, but the uh, uh, the output voltage actually coincide with the minimal peak and not with the uh, with the uh, the more sub, uh, uh, bigger uh, the bigger peak or the more uh, um, effective peak of current. So we have this uh, phase shift uh, between uh, time of uh, maximum voltage and time of uh, energy injection that we know is not good for phaseless performance. And this explains this together with the fact that the output voltage is not growing anymore linearly, uh, explains why the phase noise is degrading um, in this mode of operation. Thank you for joining me for this uh, session about uh, phase noise near center frequency and VCO biasing.